Hey Marauders, welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at a vintage issue of White Dwarf from April 1985. Now this is the issue that launched Warhammer Quest. Now as you can see this issue has been around the block. Um, well, well read issue. But it's got everything intact in it, all the pages are there where they should be. And in this issue, when you open it, you got the contents there, you got some really cool uh, ultramarines and orcs battling it out there. I just absolutely love those old retro orc dreadnoughts where you saw that orc looking out from inside it. Totally cool. Um, and in this issue, it was the start of Warhammer Quest, which was uh, released this month. Uh, weighing in at three kilos and the price for this and at the time was 40 pounds for the boxed game and i just checked it out there i i hope that i'm accurate in what i say um that translates in today's money as just over 70 pounds so that'll give you an idea as to the direction gw's uh price increases have been going so let's take a look there. They're advertising for studio staff there. We've got some of the White Dwarfs there. Some more of the Warhammer releases for this month. I really miss this in uh, in White Dwarf. It used to I used to love looking forward to what was coming out in the month. That seems to have gone. Um, some Blood Bowl Chaos Dwarves. Awesome looking stuff. The first international Warhammer tournament. Absolutely cool. Um bit of a thing about the Primarchs here, the Emperor, the Horus Heresy, just as they're sort of starting to f flesh the whole thing out. Second Founding, Ultramar, Ultramar, Space Marine Librarians, Military. And in this, we got the Blueprints for a basic strong point for Warhammer 40,000. I love this as well, that they used to give... Um, vouchers that if there was a new store open you could take it down to your local store and you got money off that's something that's sort of been assigned to the distant past and there is the blueprints for the stronghold some vintage like when would you see games workshop showing you how to cut up your conflict box now they would want you to buy it all in plastic and cut it up then uh bradford got their store that year uh, there's uh, Adrian Wood there offering some lucky uh, lucky reader this whole stash of stuff I mean this what they gave away was absolutely huge and here it is the start of it all Warhammer Quest by the guy that wrote the game Andy Jones all with the cards the room tiles the heroes, just what came in the box, phenomenal stuff, and that's something that I find with uh, Curse City that's actually missing. That that almost, I I'm not going to say simplicity, but it's not overly complicated. Yet it just worked. It was like they just tried to reinvent the wheel, and I just it was a bit unnecessary. And I think that's sort of why the game sort of fell a bit short, as the way it did, and. Um, like, I thought uh, Shadows Over Hammerhall was by far superior to um, Cursed City. Imperial Guard Veterans. That, I love, look at the lovely spiky plants. Veterans there. Games Day and Golden Demon 95. Like, when you see the quality of the painting back, even back then, like, the quality was phenomenal. Considering, like, the paint range just did not exist that exists today. There we've got the uh, the cover there for the flyer for the uh, the Exterminatus Roadshow, which, as you can see, is, is a character that uh, looks quite familiar this year. A 
got the Mordian Iron Guard. Rules to use the Mordians. Now, okay, so we got a piece cut out here. I don't know what happened there. I, that, that was gone when I was given this issue. Uh, St. Albans, Wolverhampton got their stores this year as well. Then we've got some Titan Legion stuff with the abominations and things like that. How to use the Tyranids in your Titan Legions. The Eldar. The, um, the epic Broodlord, or Hive Tyrant, I should say, just looked absolutely amazing. I just thought it was a cool, cool miniature for the size of it. We got a battle report there. I just think that, that there was so much more in these old issues of White Dwarf that the current format is lacking somewhat in where they went. Mail order. All the guys working in the mail order there. And them all sitting looking very dapper answering their the mail order hotline. Like uh, Wall Street bankers there. And fill out your thing, you got all your price lists here. And if you wanted to uh, ship anywhere in the world, it was like 40% of your order to ship out of the UK, which was quite spicy. So to ship to Ireland, add 40% of the order value. If you pay by credit card, post and packaging will be charged at cost if less than this. Okay. And you got your usual thing in the back of all the different uh, miniatures that you could buy. All the, those really, really lovely old metal Terminators. Can't see there with the shine. They're just so cool. I'd love to see them coming back as like a made to order set. Maybe we'll see it someday. The old Zodgrod Wartsnaga. That's an absolutely cool model as well. Again, I would love to see the retro model coming back along with the, uh, the vintage Gazgul model that was out there. The Von Karstens, they're looking pretty cool. And you got the uh, the epic stuff then as well. Absolutely awesome stuff, the Eldar Titans. Like the amount of parts that went into the Eldar Titans is just cool. And you got the old Imperial Titans as well. Bombards, Manticores, Hellhounds, Whirlwinds, all in their infancy there before we got the, the ones. There's the... Uh, the mole, mully, 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 and then we've got the uh, the termite assault drill, and there it is back in uh, its old epic days, right down here. And there it is off its carrier, the transporter, and you could also get a surfacing termite, which I think looks pretty, pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. That is White Dwarf issue one hundred eighty four, price two pound fifty. Uh, from uh, April 1995. Guys, and thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.